Hello, this is Ben119 and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to carry on with my Twilight Princess HD dungeon design series. So we are on the final dungeon, dungeon number 9, and this is the second part. So we have finished the outside of the dungeon, and we are going to head inside of the dungeon now. So we are inside of Ganondorf's castle, and here it is. So this main room is really cool looking, I really love the main room. There's all these chandeliers and platforms, and it's just really big. Uh, the only thing I dislike about it is they could have maybe done more with it. There is some combat going on. I, th I like the thing; it's really cool because it's really big. Obviously, they can have loads of space for combat. Uh, but I wish there was even more combat, or there was more puzzles in this room. There is a pretty cool double claw shot puzzle you have to do to get to certain parts of the room, which I think is always cool. You can't go wrong with the double claw shot, but. Maybe if there was just some switch puzzles, or there was some like torches yet to light, or there was just more to do on the ground, because there's loads of ground that's just flat and unused. It just would have been nice to see something there, but oh well. It's still a pretty cool room, no, I'm going to admit that, it looks really nice. So we're going to head over here, so a chest has just spawned that we killed all the enemies, so if we claw shot onto this one here, we can get to the chest. And I'm pretty sure this chest has got... I'm not going to spoil it. It's got the compass, so there we go. We can now see where all the chests are. And I've got all the chests on the outside. There is two chests that still show up. And that's just because we go back outside again later on, but on a higher level. So then we're actually able to access those things. So we'll get to that later, but before we do that, we're going to claw shot onto this one here. And then I'm going to claw shot onto this one over here. And I'm going to go down through this door, and we're going to do this room here. So it's got good use of a double claw shot, as you can see, getting around the room. It's very creative in that way. So this room here has actually got a dark nut. So last time we saw one of these was actually in the Temple of Time dungeon. Well, not really. I've actually seen more of these in the, uh, what's it called? The big dungeon with all the enemies, but obviously I didn't film that because it's not a proper dungeon. Uh, the Cave of Ordeals, that's what I'm on about. I've seen loads of these in the Cave of Ordeals, but that's not an official dungeon. So, uh, we're just fighting one of these now in the castle. And I think it's a cool fight. It's basically the same fight as in Temple of Time, having to refight him. This is what I like. What I would have liked to see. I would have liked to have seen some kind of mini-boss refights from the game. I know Zant kind of had that with the monkey fight and the Goron fight from uh, earlier in the game, but... I wish there was more mini boss refights because we get a Dark Knight fight again and we get King Baldwin fight, but maybe if they just thrown in like uh, the mini boss from uh, Snow Peak Ruins or the mini boss from Arbiter's Grounds, because the mini boss from Arbiter's Grounds is a really cool mini boss. They just thrown those in. It would have made the whole like dungeon more memorable in my opinion. Maybe it would have become just mini boss fights and that might have been may have been bad. Because something I do like about this dungeon is, it's not just like a formula. Like I know in Ocarina of Time it's like, oh you do these six trials, then you go up this tower, fight enemies, and then you get to the end. Like it's very linear and it's very formulaic. And even Wind Waker, it's like, refight four mini four bosses, re redo parts of dungeons, and then we'll let you to the end. But with this dungeon here, it does feel like its own dungeon in a way, it doesn't just feel like trials. It's a bit of both in a way, like there is trials, but... Yeah, like that trial there with the boomerang it is pretty cool because it reminds me of the forest temple where you have to uh, light some of the torches and then you have to put one of the torches out to actually lift yourself up. It's a pretty cool use of the boomerang and it's cool I have to reuse the boomerang again. So there's some fighting in this room here. So there's two doors we could pick from. If you go left there's more combat stuff to deal with and if you go right there's more puzzle stuff to deal with. I think in order to get every chest in the dungeon, you do have to go both ways, so... Uh, yeah, just... I, I usually go, uh... I actually recommend going right first. I know I went left here, but... If you go right first, you basically you're able to create a shortcut. Where you're able to get back to the left, to the right side easier. And it just makes the whole dungeon easier and quicker. But I decided to take the right path. It's no big deal which one you go with. I like the use of having a hidden switch there behind a painting. I like how if you hit an incorrect switch, a load of enemies fall on you. It's a pretty cool use of traps. And I would have liked to have seen more traps in the game and this dungeon. 
And right here, as you can see, I said this side is more combat related, and that's because we have to fight two Dark Nuts in this room. Uh, two Dark Nuts at once. I would have liked to have seen this more in the game, like, even in, like, Palace of Twilight, they could have thrown some Dark Nuts at us. I think Dark Nuts are cool enemies. The only thing I don't like about them is, if you're not using hidden skills, they can be really, really difficult, and fighting multiple Dark Nuts at once can also be really challenging. Also, there's so many ways you can get blocked by them, which I guess is good because it makes it challenging, but I feel like when I'm fighting them, I'm always doing the same moves over and over, and I kind of want to try out different patterns, and I want to try out different techniques, but I feel like I can never get the chance because they always end up blocking it, or the other one hits me, and it ends up becoming just a mess, and you just want to take them out rather than uh, try out different techniques, because I like trying out different ways of fighting them. They're right there, you can do that, which is pretty cool you can break off pieces of armor by hitting them. I do like how the combat changes when uh, you knock their armor off, it changes the fight a bit. It's pretty interesting. Fighting two at once isn't that big a deal and I think the main reason why is because when they do damage to you it only does like one heart damage. Because I know uh, they have like iron knuckles in Ocarina of Time which is basically the Dark Knight equivalent in that game. And Iron Knuckles do four hearts of damage every time they hit you and when you get hit like it's bad. Like, 4 hearts is quite a lot, especially if you only have like 10 or 11 at that point. Like, that's most of your health gone, but 1 heart of damage when you have 20 hearts is barely anything, and there's probably loads of recovery hearts in this room. Like, right there, look at all those recovery hearts. You've probably got 4 bottles worth of potions, like, you don't- there's no risk really fighting these. Like, you don't really feel, like, threatened by them because they don't do much damage and they're not that hard to fight, they just take a while. With things like Iron Knuckles, they can do a serious amount of damage if you're not careful and if you don't pay attention, so yeah. Dark Nuts are pretty cool though, We're right near the end of the fight, I just wanted to talk over that fight because it's a bit boring if I just talk about all the hits that are going on because it's just fighting really. <laughs> it's a Twilight Princess combat. I like the combat in Twilight Princess. But people may complain about it, so it's too easy, it's just spamming. But I think having basic combat is sometimes nice games like I know Breath of the Wild combat system is uh, interesting to say the least because a lot of dodging and getting flurry rushes I think it works for that game but that kind of combat I don't think would work with Twilight Princess and I don't think the Twilight Princess combat would be good enough for Breath of the Wild it just feel too basic so that's my opinion on combat uh, so again as a final dungeon I think it's doing a good job of standing out because I always remember this dungeon for being interesting as a final dungeon. I remember like the rooms and having little puzzles to do and using items. I, I always remember it being interesting but with like Ocarina of Time and Wind Waker all I can really think about is just trials like it just it doesn't even feel like a dungeon it just feels like a test but this actually feels like a proper dungeon you're going through. So uh, we went on the chest there and it basically gave us that we went on a switch there and it gives us access to a chest and we're able to get rupees from it. So it's just an uh, optional chest doing that side. Uh, if you just want to go to the right, because the right basically leads you to the same place as the left, uh, you can just do that because the right side is quicker because you don't have to fight two Dark Nuts at once. So we just have to do this puzzle again, which is a bit annoying. Uh, so we're going to go up here. I'm going to use our boomerang to uh, hit the switch. I'm not sure why the staircase is in a weird pattern. Like As you can see, that part of it's missing on the left. I think that's just because the game wants to like trick you into thinking you have to do something you don't have to do. I know I like it. I, it. It looks a bit unfinished, but I like it. So we're gonna go this path this time. This is the right path. I think I said this is the left path before I got a bit confused with perspectives. So right here, we've actually got a, a lantern puzzle right here. So this puzzle is a really strange one because we have to uh, light the lamps in a certain order. But the one thing that this puzzle, I guess, got wrong is it doesn't really tell you which one to start from. Because as you can see, I've, I've lit all four of these torches and I've done it wrong for some reason. But because the thing is, it doesn't really have a like a point, like it doesn't say you start from this torch. If it said like there was a certain torch you started from, I think this puzzle would make a lot more sense. So as you can see right here, I'm failing the puzzle just because I don't really know the starting point. So that's what it says there, so I presume you can start from here because this is what would make sense so you go up to that one but no look it goes out straight away so I figured it must be this one so you go there you go there 
There you go here. And that somehow works. And that's just really weird to me. It's almost the opposite of what you'd expect. I think that's kind of what they went for there. But I wish they'd just put in a starting point that you start from. Even if there was just another painting that you could knock down and it said the starting point under that one, it would make more sense to me and it would make that puzzle better. Because it just feels like I'm guessing. Maybe I'm missing something, but let me know in the comments if you figured out uh, a way it could be showing you that I've missed. So right here we got some combat. This combat's really easy. We just got Dino Posts that are armoured. Uh, these are pretty simple enemies. Uh, earlier on in the game they are a lot harder when you don't really know what to do and you, you have less skills. Once you got to this point you should be super comfortable with fighting these and they should feel like nothing. So just fight them. There we go. These would have been good to have in the courtyard. If we had a bunch of those in the courtyard, like five or six of them at once, that would be like a pretty cool trial to take on. But there wasn't really any of that. Uh, they saved them for the castle. So we're going to enter this room here and it's basically like a checkpoint. It just drops this chandelier down. So say if we uh, turn off the game and we want to come back to this point here we can just uh, claw shot up there and get back. Or say if we game over for example uh, we can go all the way back up here. Like we don't have to go all the way around. It's a pretty cool little save point I guess. Like technically we didn't even really need to do this side of the dungeon. But I just did it anyway just to show that off. I think there's a chest that you can access as well. So we're going to go through here. And we are outside of the castle again. So you can get outside of the castle by going through the door on the opposite side as well with the dark nuts. I just didn't show it off because I didn't want, want to go outside quite yet. So we're going to head straight forward. And there is an Aerophos over here. I think that's what they're called. And we haven't seen one of these in a while. Uh, I think last time we saw these was City in the Sky. Uh, so it's not too long ago, I guess. But uh, these enemies are actually not that hard. Like It's a really questionable design choice, I think. Because in the City in the Sky, you literally have to fight two of these at once at one point. But right here, we only have to fight one of them at once. So maybe if they'd thrown two of them, or even three of them, which would have been a good challenge, that would have made this part harder and way more tense. I think just fighting one of them was... It's okay, and it, it's pretty cool how it leads to a chest over here, and this chest is actually important. Uh, it's a little bit easy to get to this, and I wish there was more combat to do. It just isn't, it is memorable obviously this dungeon with all these combat sections, but at the same time, the combat is really easy, and it's not very threatening, like at no point I think, oh god I'm overwhelmed by all these enemies, like I never think that playing this dungeon, I always think, oh there's just enemies here, I can just kill them super easily, bam, done it. Like over here, like even this combat section is pretty easy. Like you got the bosky chest there, and you got a bunch of those alphos, and you got these snipers up here. And we got a proper cutscene going on. And this right here actually annoyed me. I, d I think with most people, they probably weren't annoyed because of story stuff. But basically, uh, we're being saved by some people. And we'll see who it is in a minute. And it's that bird over there. And you remember that bird from earlier on in the game? And you remember these people from earlier in the game? They've, they've come over to the castle to save Link. How convenient. There's like four of those and like two bulblins that Link could have easily killed himself. I could have literally just done a great spin on the those Alphos and shot the bulblins. It would have been completely fine. I didn't really need their help. It would have been good maybe if there was like a stupid amount of enemies. They would made it like like really really hard but that to me it doesn't really feel like saving like Link didn't really feel like he was under much danger because I could have easily taken them out if it was like just overwhelmed like if there was like 30 of those alphos from all directions and there was like arrows everywhere and everything just got took out at once I think that would have been more memorable but I just get I guess they just had to find a way to include them in the story but there we go uh, we got the boss key. I like how they had to have a little cutscene for the boss key to make it more memorable. And here we go, we're in the final climb. Now this final climb section I do love. Uh, I think the music in this section is amazing. Uh, the music in Final Dungeons as well, I haven't really talked about that that much. I think that's very important to have as well, especially towards the boss door. Because obviously it builds up the atmosphere and the whole dungeon and everything. 
The music on the outside of the dungeon, not really even been music on the outside. And the music in the inside sections near the bottom hasn't, hasn't been as good. But the music starts to get really good here as we get higher and higher. And I think it just fits really well. Again, I think the combat sections right here are a little bit easy, a little bit underwhelming. I keep saying that. But I think these staircases are really cool because it forces us to use other items. Like right here, we get to use the double claw shot again. So, there we go. There uh, we can claw shot onto here. And then onto the one over here. So we can skip this entire staircase. That's awesome. So we're going to head over here. And there's some more dinophobes. It would have been good if these were armoured ones. Like, why are these just regular ones? With helmets on. I don't think that they really even make a difference. Think it's just aesthetics. Like, I never really see them even use the shields. They don't have more health or anything, so yeah. So we're gonna go up here with the spinner. And we're at the final door. And we just got one last dark nut to take out. I do appreciate how the, there's a dark nut uh, defending the door. And I think it is a cool final fight having to fight a dark nut for one last time. It could have been even better, like say if there was like three dark nuts or two dark nuts. I think that would have made it more memorable, but I think this dark nut's pretty cool. He looks a little bit different as well, his armor looks more powerful. I think he might even have a little bit more health. And he may be a little bit tougher than other dark nuts. I can't say that for sure though. Actually thinking about it, I don't think he even is. But if they had made him like a lot tougher, I, I think that would have been more memorable. For like a final mini boss kind of thing for the boss. The music in this section is amazing though. So we're just gonna keep fighting him. And as you can see that's the main door right there. As soon as he's dead we can enter the boss. And in the next episode we are actually going to be doing the boss. Now there is a lot of story mode cutscenes in the boss and I was deciding whether I should take them out or leave them in. And I decided to leave them in because I think it's just cool to keep the story in. I'm not, I'm not gonna talk about the story too much. I might talk a bit about the game though overall and about all the dungeons and my plans to do other content in the future during that. But right here we can actually go into this hidden room over here to the left. So if you've still got that key from the hidden graveyard, you can actually enter this room here and there is loads and loads of chests that we can access. So these chests have got loads of things, they got rupees, they got bombs, they got Pretty much anything you can think of. And I think it is pretty cool that like, you can obviously refill your inventory before the final boss. It's a really cool reward to have. But the thing that doesn't make sense to me is why is there so many rupees in this dungeon? Like literally we've got to the very end of the game. I've got 20 hearts. I've got pretty much every collectible. and I will have every collectible by the time I've left this room. So why are you giving me rupees? I've got nothing left to buy in this entire game. Like, unless you do the final dungeon before you've completed the game, which I doubt you'll do. Uh, I guess it's helpful, but I never do the final dungeon before completing the game. I always do everything and then I do the final dungeon, because it makes the most sense to me. I guess it's cool having all these rupees though, but they just seem a little bit pointless to me. I don't think there's anything else it could have really given us. Uh, so, there we go, 200 rupees. That's waste. And then here we have actually got the final stamp in the game. So you should have, if you collected all the stamps up to this point, this will be your 49th. And once you get 49 stamps, you'll get the 50th stamp, which is a midness stamp. So there you go. Uh, if you got all of them, well done. Uh, it's not easy, especially if you're not using a guide. And there we go. So we've got every collectible, and all that's left to do in this game is to kill Ganondorf. So we're going to do that next time, so thank you so much for watching this dungeon design series, it's been really fun making it. Tune in to the final episode where we're going to be doing the final boss, it's going to be a long one and one you that. But yeah, if you want to watch that, that's cool. So like the video and subscribe if you're new around here. And I'll see you in the final part, goodbye.